we have with us Mr. Arindam Lahiri, the CEO of ASDC. Uh, Mr. Lahiri, thank you so much for the time Thanks. and for talking to Thanks. us. My pleasure. You know, I want to understand from you what is the level of skills in the automotive industry in India if you talk about the present scenario. You know, we are seeing a lot of trans transformation happening in this space. You know, electric vehicles are coming in. People are, you know, also buying a lot of automatic cars if you talk about. So ASDC has primarily been, you know, in the space of upskilling the manpower at the dealership level and in the manufacturing space as well. So what is the level of skills at this point in time if you talk about the auto industry? Great. Uh, I think uh, it's a very significant juncture that we are standing today because I think there is a uh, two-way disruption that is happening. One disruption is due to the environment which is essentially around let's say the pandemic has caused a lot of uh, academic institutions not to function regularly. Skills training has always been very physical, you know, it, it can't be fully done digitally. Mm -hmm. So these have been some challenges and therefore the flow of skilled manpower coming into the system has also gone down, you know. At the same time, there are newer technologies that are coming in and that disruption has also further added to the complexity of the process. So we are tackling it at again from two directions. One is how do you reskill and upskill the existing people in the industry for the new technologies, especially on areas of electric vehicle. Uh, BS6 itself is a new technology for the industry still because it has just been adopted right. well, some time back and uh, you know beyond the authorized dealerships. Uh, awareness about the so, or ability to do servicing of such vehicles itself is a big challenge right. which is a big I think it's a bigger challenge in the let's say a industry like a segment like two wheelers for instance mm -hmm. so we're trying to address those on the other side what we're also trying to do is on the manufacturing and on uh, the dealership side is to bring in fresh manpower and we are taking help of the apprenticeship scheme which is a very flexible program that the government has where industry has a huge amount of flexibility uh, to induct new manpower, train them in the process, and there are financial and non-financial benefits that the industry can derive out of this. We've had a record intake uh, this financial year. Uh, through us, ASDC being one of the administering bodies among many, including ITI, uh, ITIs, etc., uh, or polytechnics, uh, we have still been able to add in excess of 60,000 fresh people in this one year. Okay. And just remember that the first two months of the year was a complete washout right. because of the second wave. Right. We've had fear of third wave keep, uh, keeping on coming. Mm -hmm. But we still uh, saw a huge number of fresh people coming into the system through the apprenticeship channel. And obviously the reskilling has also been a huge uh, effort for us. Uh, we've almost done about 25 to 30,000 uh, people during this entire year with the whole challenge of not being able to do a lot of physical programs, but we've still been able to do about 25 to 30,000 uh, reskilling programs okay. uh, where the candidates have been impacted. Okay. So these fresh candidates, you know, you mentioned about 60,000 new students mm -hmm. coming into the system through this apprenticeship program. Yeah, yeah. So which are the courses that are that they are opting when, when they go inside and yeah, so to, to learn? A major chunk of it today is in manufacturing space in the component industry. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of ACMA member companies, for instance, and uh, two tier three other companies as well. Uh, where these people would come into areas like welding, machining, okay. uh, assembly operations, quality, maintenance. These are various areas where these people are being absorbed, right. which takes care of the manpower growth requirements of the organization okay. as well as replacement of the older uh, people who have moved out. There have also been some reverse migration which has impacted these companies. So mm -hmm. they had to bring in fresh manpower. So then how do you actually assess these candidates, you know, whether they are fit for doing this job or, you know, getting right, into the right. ecosystem? So the apprenticeship model itself uh, is uh, designed to take care of that. So there's an initial period of uh, basic training which happens okay. in a training center usually. 
uh, where they go through the theory and practicals, etc. We have an assessment at the end of it. And then they get on to the companies in the mode of being an on-the-job trainees. Right. And they con continue to get evaluated over the period of next one year to two years period, mm -hmm. let's say, during the apprenticeship duration. And uh, then they get certified. And a lot of them obviously also continue as a worker or an operator or a technician in that organization. So if you talk about that aspect, that particular number, so what is the percentage of people being retained in these organizations even after getting certified uh, from their on-the-job so training? Typically, almost 90 95% of the apprentices continue to be in full-time job after their apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. uh, I would put maybe 65 to 70% continue with the same organization even beyond their apprenticeship period. The rest gets absorbed by similar other organizations right. who would pick them up because they are available mm -hmm. post their training. Uh, and, and it's a real training, you know, in right. a real environment. Right. So they are far superior than what you can get uh, in the market as a fresh candidate. So in terms of employability of, you know, young candidates today, yeah. so if you compare it with the past, so yeah. is there a significant improvement in the employability of these people now? Uh, I would say that people who go through a apprenticeship cycle, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and we are trying to extend it to white collar job roles as well, okay. or maybe grey collar job roles, right. let's say, definitely at a blue collar, I think uh, it makes immense case, uh, there is immense, uh, I think, opportunity for uh, individuals to become much more employable mm. if you go through this program, right. rather than trying to you know do a general graduation or right. a diploma mm -hmm. course only mm -hmm. because you're not getting real life experience right. uh, in our training so i think if this path is taken up i think the government of india has given all of us a very uh, ambitious target next year uh, to get more and more apprentices into the system where and i i i do see uh, a huge opportunity awaiting us in the indian industry uh, especially in the Indian automobile industry, uh, to have more and more. Uh, I, I think there is a huge opportunity in the dealership areas mm -hmm. where uh, dealerships could actually take advantage of apprentice uh, programs. Right. So when you talk about these opportunities, so you know we are also seeing the space kind of transform with new technologies coming in. So at the course level also, you know, are there some of new uh, these new initiatives that ASDC is taking in terms of the curriculum? So as you know, the people, the students who are coming in, they get trained in relevant courses uh, going forward. Yeah. So one of the best thing that has happened during the pandemic is that ASDC has now revised uh, more than 100 uh, curriculum uh, to the current context. You know, which in a regular year of operation would have been very challenging to do. But since we were focused much more on doing such things, I think we could we could do that. So yes, all the existing job roles have been upgraded to reflect the changes that have happened in technology. We've also brought in a lot of new curriculum, uh, especially in the areas of uh, uh, Industry 4.0 applications, uh, electric vehicle uh, related uh, specific areas in manufacturing, engineering, um, uh, also service, you know, these areas. Right. Uh, we are also trying to build certain partnerships internationally mm -hmm. for people who have those expertise and we bring on those curriculum and programs into India as well right. uh, for us to learn from there create a pool of uh, uh, trainers in this mm -hmm. and uh, so so for instance we're doing some very innovative training of trainer programs in partnership with our German counterparts okay uh, and uh, these trainers undergo a training in these new technologies right with the help of Indian experts as well as the German experts mm -hmm. and then they get certified not only for the Indian market by ASDC they also get so internationally certified okay. by the German agencies. Right. So these people then in turn are available for mm. us to train candidates in the newer technologies. Right. And that's the pathway that we are taking at ASDC. Are you also seeing these trainers who eventually get certified from your overseas counterparts, uh, counterparts as well? So are they getting opportunity to go overseas and maybe train people uh, there? 
at actually, you know, overseas uh, opportunities itself is a big space to work with. You okay. know, so while uh, we 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 had just initiated some work just before uh, pandemic, but the pandemic has kind of pushed us back a couple right. of years because of the international travel restrictions, yeah. etc. So we're doing a very interesting project in the uh, in the Middle East uh, in terms of uh, uh, training drivers for licenses here and then uh, making them move over. Okay. But these are slightly low-end jobs. But we are also looking at service technicians, mm -hmm. uh, experienced service technicians. Uh, we are looking at manufacturing job roles in like in CNC, mm -hmm. advanced CNC programming, etc. Okay. Uh, where there is a f uh, there is a very very uh, constant requirement that we are seeing from various overseas countries. I think we have to build an ecosystem around it. Mm -hmm. uh, so our umbrella organization, National Skill Development Corporation, has already uh, f created a separate hundred percent subsidiary focused on international markets. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that that will open up a lot of opportunities for people. Uh, to look at uh, international opportunities. If you look at the structure of, you know, you talked about NSDC. So yeah. if you look at the overall structure, right. So how is ASDC kind of, you know, providing these courses, this curriculum as a student? <coughs> where do I need to go if I want to enroll into one of the programs? So ASDC is like the apex organization within the automobile sector, right? And there are similar other sectoral organizations which are there in the country. So if, if someone is wanting to do a program in automotive uh, industry, ASDC is a one-stop shop for them. We have a large number of training, affiliated training centers, okay. which are run by our uh, training partners. Mm -hmm. And training partners range from OEMs to uh, component companies to dealerships to standalone training companies or mm -hmm. universities or uh, polytechnic colleges and stuff like that, or ITIs even. Uh, so we have a mix of such uh, people as our training providers and the student can choose depending on what course they want to do and what location where they want to do it. Mm -hmm. They can come and select. We have a very interesting uh, microsite in our website called careerguide.asdc.org.in okay. which gives the student to, uh, an opportunity to explore. Right. You know, where can they learn and if they learn something, what can be their career pathway etc right and uh, that has been put together by a lot of different inputs from a lot of different experts and i hope that over a period of time this will become very useful for these participants so in terms of the geographical <laughs> presence right now so how many training centers or these affiliated training centers do you have right now and is there a plan to expand uh, this going yeah forward? we are we we constantly keep looking at new locations uh, we had a peak uh, of about 1200 plus uh, training centers uh, because of COVID issues, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I think we are at about 850, 800, 850 active centers right now mm -hmm. in terms of training centers. But we are very uh, confident that we will be able to uh, hit back to the 1,200 plus number very quickly in mm -hmm. terms of geographical uh, dispersion. Uh, we cover all states, all union territories where we have and all kinds of programs, right from manufacturing to service to sales to driving we have uh, right. a training providers. Right. Coming to some of these, you know, new skills which are required, you know, if you talk about the aftermarket or the, the, the after sales side of the business. Mm. So, you know, we are seeing a lot of, you know, uptick in the CNG space happening, you know, a lot right. of people also buying automatic cars these mm. days. Mm. So, is there, uh, are students like uh, getting enrolled into these programs? Yes. Or yes. is there an upskilling program which is, you know, being offered by ASDC at, at this point in time? So, CNG specifically, we are focusing much more on bringing in fresh skills. Uh, we are trying to see how can we offer the upskilling program also to the existing mechanics who can tra uh, kind of upgrade themselves to also handle CNG part of it. The program is ready, we are looking at an opportunity to de deploy that. Uh, however, we have already started with our CNG uh, technician program uh, and we have already done close to about 200 numbers over the last 6-8 months. Mm -hmm. Uh, we started it after the second wave actually um, and we are hopeful that now with the uh, pandemic kind of s settling in uh, you know to normalcy more or less uh, hopefully we should be able to do more numbers here 
uh, more people can get into it and more than 300 uh, I think cities today are uh, in CNG grid or CNG network right so we do see that as an opportunity automatic vehicles and the newer technologies that are coming into yeah. vehicles a lot of vehicles today uh, just above the entry level I would say have started getting uh, connected vehicle features yeah. etc a lot more electronics is coming in so we are going we are doing uh, specific um, upskilling programs in terms of how to use onboard diagnostics how mm -hmm. to use the diagnostic software how to interpret error codes how to uh, you know uh, fix parts or uh, sub units sub assembly units uh, based on the error code readings etc so right. i think that is also being taken up right uh, so these new technologies so are you also eyeing adas uh, on yes, yes. connected uh, so in and including drivers for instance right. you know especially like if you have the driver assistance yeah. uh, systems kind of a thing. So we're doing a very interesting program where existing drivers are being upskilled mm -hmm. on uh, and telling them on features which are new technologies. Right. Uh, we're trying to upscale. See, you would probably know that some of these more sophisticated commercial vehicles today have lots of uh, you know connective features. Uh, you know, gone are the days that you just had a GPS device. Yeah. You, you can do everything actually uh, today for that vehicle remotely. So we are looking at how how can we get more and more drivers ready to adapt to that system. Because if the drivers are not ready, uh, the manufacturers are also not going to be able to sell those vehicles. Right, right, right. So we are working very closely with the commercial vehicle manufacturers and trying to see how uh, we could offer such programs to existing drivers who would want to go to the next level and right. be aware of the newer technology. Right. Similarly with the working population, I mean in the uh, manufacturing or other service technician job roles, we are trying to see how, uh, what are those specific input areas that we need to upgrade them on. And it's a constant process, I would say. Right, yeah. on that Thank note, you. thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.